Good morning. It's Friday morning here in, in New York City, New York, obviously, given the theme of this vlog, I'm still here. Um, so last night um, we went out for food and found this lovely, lovely salad place. I think it's a chain. We don't have it in the UK, but it was it was really nice. Anyway, everyone watching this will be like, that's a really basic place. But I thought it was lovely and there were loads of vegan options and stuff. Um, I had the Tofu Crunch, I think it was called. It was really, really good and really good value for money as well. I think it was about $12 for like the thing. I love showing you a picture so you can see that. And had this watermelon drink thing. I had a lot of sugar in, so that kind of hit me. <laughs> um, jet lag wise, so I woke bolt upright at 4 a.m., which would be 9 a.m. UK time. So it's a bit like, okay, expected that. Um, and then this morning, I am off to see or to visit um, the uh, drama bookshop, which is just around the corner, which is very, very convenient. And uh, then this afternoon, I have booked a ticket, well, like a flexi pass thing for the Museum of Broadway. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I'm not really wanting to see, like, generally most of, like, the kind of quote unquote sites as it were it's quite specific what i want to go and see so so that's what you're gonna see um what else what else what else oh yes so i started listening to an audio book I, I downloaded last night um uh, on the recommendation of the acknowledgements from hellbent which i'm reading as you know um and it's about it's cool well, i'll just tell you what it's called because it kind of explains it in the title uh, it's called uh, Ebony and Ivy, Race, Slavery and the Troubled History of America's Universities by Craig Stephen Wilder. And obviously hellbent set in an Ivy League university, namely Yale. But I also thought being here and being involved in universities and stuff with it might be really, really interesting as like a kind of companion listen while I'm here. So, um, so that's what I have done. And now it is, what time is it? About half past eight in the morning. So I'm having a coffee. Then I'm gonna go and find some tea somewhere. Um, and then I'll show you uh, what I get up to today. All right, see you in a bit.
Hello, welcome back. So it's evening now um, of the day of the last recorded clip you saw me. It's still Friday. Um, who the hell knows what day it is? Um, and um, yeah, I had a good day. So this today we went for a big walk around the city because today was like an off day before, you know, to kind of get over the jet lag. Um, and we walked, yeah, pretty much up and down the city. We went to about as far down as Battery Park and stuff. Um, had saw the flat iron, you should see some footage of that. Um, where else did we go? Fifth Avenue and stuff, that was cool. It's kind of iconic, isn't it? Um, and I went to, finally got to go to the drama bookshop, which was lovely. I got a few things, I'll show you what I got. Um, I picked up a copy of this. Uh, Method or Madness by uh, Robert Lewis, which is about method acting. And I picked up Stella Adler on Ibsen, Stringberg and Chekhov. I'm teaching Stella Adler this term and I'm probably teaching uh, Chekhov next term. So I um, thought I'd pick those up. They're kind of work-related things. Um, other book-wise... Um, I'll tell you for why. So I did kind of get quite a few things today, and um, but I'm not going to feel bad about it because, like, this for me is kind of a. I mean, it may happen again, but it feels like a once in a lifetime uh, trip. So there we go. I also picked up uh, "Fearlessly Different" by Mickey Rowe, which is about um, an autistic actor who played the lead in uh, the Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Um, on Broadway, which is very cool. I love a memoir. And I also picked up uh, Doll's House Part 2 by Lucas Nath, um, which I have wanted a copy of, but it's cheaper here than it is in the UK. So great. And also a copy of The Adding Machine, which is one of my favourite kind of surrealist, surrealist-ish plays from um, a very long, long time ago. I can't remember how old this is now, actually. 20s so that's cool um and it's really hard to get hold of in england as well or i've just found it hard to get hold of but i also got some magazines now i love a magazine as well as i love a book so i picked up some stuff that we can't get easily in england a copy of playbill magazine which is kind of like the theater uh kind of they do them on um like we get programs in the uk when you go to the theater uh they they give them out free on Broadway and off Broadway and stuff like that, I believe. Uh, but you can also buy the magazine, so I got that. I got the Hollywood Reporter because it's got a Sarah Michelle Gellar cover. And if you don't know, I'm a huge fan of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She's my icon. Um, and this is just a beautiful cover. I got a back issue of The Dramatist because it's the, it's the Stephen Sondheim issue from, I'm presuming when he passed, uh, tragically. Um, made a pilgrimage to the Stephen Sondheim Theatre on Broadway as well today. I haven't been inside or anything, but I got a lovely picture from the outside. Um, New York Magazine, which I love. You can get this in the UK, actually, but um, I just really like it. I like the posters and the adverts and stuff like that. I'm not claiming that I'm not ridiculous, <laughs> so there we go. And then finally, I'll be a backstage, which is kind of, I think, their version of the stage that we have in the UK-ish. Uh, um, so, so that's cool. So I got those. Um, then I went to the Museum of Broadway, which was very cool. I got flexi tickets. It was quite expensive. It was about $50. Um, but I thought, well, I do want to go. So I'm going to insert quite a lot of spammy footage, um, about that in here now. And we're back. No time has passed for me, but you've seen footage. So from the Museum of Broadway, I picked up a little notebook because I realised I'd forgotten a notebook for work. And I thought it was kind of cute. And um, also a pair of socks that say Museum of Broadway on because I thought it was really camp to buy socks as a souvenir. Um, I may live to regret this. but And then finally, I went to um, Barnes & Noble. As you know from my Chicago vlog, I love a Barnes & Noble. And I'd seen somebody with this tote bag as well from... Um, BNN. Um, so I thought, oh, I'll get that as well because I've seen them with it on BookTube. Uh, and I picked up a few things from the Barnes and Noble. Now this is the last thing I'm gonna buy. Like I said, I did I did have a little bit of a splurge, but um, there's some stuff that I really wanted that are like American editions of things that I prefer to the UK editions. And also, um, I'm not really gonna be going out anymore now. It's pretty much gonna be solid work for the next couple of days. So I got, oh, socks again picked up these book nerd pride socks i thought they were really really cute 
so this is who I am now. I also got a copy of um, Olga Tokaj. The car trucks, uh, drive your bones over the plow, drive your plow over the bones of the dead, which won the Pulitzer, and um, one of the kind of biggest companies, Complicite, they're an international company, but they are based in the UK, are doing a theatrical adaptation of this, and I might go, and I just think this cover's really a lot nicer, the American one, so I thought I'll get a copy of that. I picked up for my, you know, I'm doing the Dickens Toni Morrison read this year. And it was really hard, I was finding it really hard to get a copy of Tar Baby so, uh, by Toni Morrison. So this is, um, I'm not reading this until I think April, but I thought I'd get it now. Um, and then I got this beautiful Pelican edition of Hamlet, Pelican Shakespeare, um, because I've really wanted this edition and I'm directing Hamlet um, in March. So that's nice. And then finally I picked up uh, this which I'd seen advertised on Instagram, um, Activities of Daily Living by Lisa Sayo Chen, um, which is a book about Alice, a, a Taiwanese immigrant in her late 30s who is creating a project about the enigmatic downtown performance artist, uh, Teqing Hsieh, I believe, I'm not quite sure if that's how, how I pronounced it, and his monumental 1980s performance pieces. Uh, she's also become a caretaker for her aging stepfather, a Vietnam vet whose dream of making the of making traditional Chinese furniture dissolved into alcoholism and dementia. So it's probably quite hard going, but I thought it's actually worked out cheaper than it would to order it in the UK and ship it. So, so that's what I've bought. Um, so tonight, um, it's about six o'clock, half six ish here, um, and we're gonna go for some food. So once again, oh, um, I'll put in stuff that I had today. So I went to this um, little sandwichy place called uh, Proper Food, which I'm pretty sure there was a woman behind the counter who was definitely not American. I think she was British and I'm hoping she's like a mank or something. That's what she's called, like proper food. And I had this gorgeous tofu and um, I think it was spinach wrap thing. It was really, really nice. I'll flash a photo of that and then I'll show you whatever I have tonight. So there's my check-in. Still reading Hellbent, still listening to my audio book. Uh, it's like this Asthmatically, probably get more reading done tonight because I'm still not really adjusted to the time zone. But hey ho, see you soon.